and boy, I love good music, amen. If you don't have some good music, let me know. I can show you where to get some, amen. You get some, you get some good music. My wife and I, what we do is when we're at home, or if I'm in my office, you come up during the week, you'll hear I've got some music in there, some godly music, and it does a lot for your spirit. It does a lot for your soul. And uh, I started to try to play some before the services and things because good music, you can't underestimate what good music can do for you, amen. And uh, just as much as God's Word can, can help and can lift your spirit, so can good old-fashioned God-loving music, amen. Uh, and, and a lot of times music affects attitude. Amen. One of these days, we're gonna, I'm going to do a study on music uh, and what God says about it. And, uh, and a lot of young teenagers and a lot of young people, you can always tell their attitudes by the music they listen to. Music always affects your attitude, affects your spirit. And so get you some good godly music at home. Play that during the day and watch as, uh, as, as the spirit of your home will change just through simple music. Amen. All right. Well, let's all stand. Genesis chapter 14, that wasn't the message, but you got that for free. So I gave that to you there, so uh, amen. Uh, you, uh, next time I'll charge you for that one, but no. Genesis chapter 14, we're going to read verse 19 through 24 tonight. Genesis chapter 14, verses 19 through 24. And we're going to read this responsively, so I'll read the first verse, and then you can join me on the second verse. I'll read the third, you'll, you'll join me on the fourth, and uh, we'll read that responsively there. So I'm going to begin reading at verse number 19, and let's begin. The Bible says, And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons, and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up mine hand unto the Lord, the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich." save only that which the young men have eaten and the portion of the men which went with me. Aner, Ashkel, and Mamre, let them take their portion. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you, God. Thank you for the message that you have, Lord, that you've worked on my heart this past week. I pray that, Lord, it's a blessing. Lord, and I pray that you'd speak to us. Lord, give us a truth from, your, from the Word of God. Lord, how excited that I am. Lord, to get to preach a, an encouraging message tonight, Lord, and what a blessing that it is. I pray that you would use it, Lord, to do what you'd have it to do. Holy Spirit of God, would you guide and direct tonight? Would you use, Lord, use me, fill me, Holy Spirit, and may I only say what you want to be said, nothing more and nothing less. May your work be done. Again, I know, Father, Lord, I can't do this work, God. It has to be done of you, and I ask that you would do it through me, Lord. I sure do love you. Thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Boy, I was excited about this message this last week when I was reading in my Bible this portion of Scripture and the Lord brought this to my mind and I got to write out this message. Uh, I, just had a lot, I just had fun with this. This one is just a message uh, that a pastor gets to just have fun with. But we're going to start here real quick. Many of us in this room... Uh, have a job or have gone job searching at one time. You, many of you have a job, you know what it is to work a job or have had a job at one time. And so uh, one big important factor when you're looking for a job is when a job has good benefits. A lot of us look for benefits at a job. We want to see what are the perks if we work there and if we're an employee, what do we get because we work there? What type of benefits you get can influence your decision on a job. Uh, the job may not pay as much, but if it's got good benefits, it's better than the job that maybe pays a little bit more because of the benefits there. It saves you money in the, in the, in the back end. Well, when I was reading this, we're going to look at verse number 15. The Bible says, After these things the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Give you a little bit of the story here. In this part of Abraham's life, uh, here in, chap in chapter 14 and 15, uh, Abram deals with some kings that made war. If you're not familiar with Abraham, Abraham is, uh, is a man in the Bible when you read in the book of Genesis. He left his homeland, which was the Ur of the Chaldees, the Bible says, and God told him to leave his homeland and to go to a better land. God said, I've prepared for you a better land. Abraham was one of the few men that sought God, that loved God. And so God said, Abraham, I want you to leave your home and I want you to go to Canaan. Many of you are familiar with the word Canaan. And in, in the Old Testament, this is a picture of heaven. 
He said, Abraham, I want you to leave the land that you're in, and I want you to go to Canaan. Abraham, by faith, having never seen the land of Canaan, left where he was familiar there in the Ur of the Chaldees. He left what was comfort comfortable and followed God's direction. You have to understand, in the Bible days, uh, they didn't have cars. They didn't travel on main highways. Uh, you know, where they, uh, they didn't have an airplane. They could just take in about 20 minutes. They're there. This meant that Abraham was going to take a little bit of a journey. He was going to have to have some food. He was going to have to have water. He was going to have to pack up everything and put it on the back of a hairy old camel and, uh, and, and travel to this land. But because God told him to do it, Abraham, by faith, having never seen this land, he'd never, he'd, he grew up in the Ur of the Chaldees, never heard of the land of Canaan, not, not knowing where God was going to take him, had not ventured very far, and then having to deal with the idea, well, Lord, I'm going to need food, I'm going to need water, I'm going to need all of these things. But Abraham, by faith, said, God, I'll do it. And so he left. My friend, can I say, and, and sometimes God will ask you to leave where you're familiar or where you're comfortable and follow his leading in your life. And to do that takes faith. Amen. But you follow God by faith wherever God leads you. Amen. But here in this part of Abraham's life, he's in between traveling. He's in between going to the land of Canaan. He's kind of uh, uh, settling down here, uh, getting things together. The Bible says God has increased him. He is, a, he is uh, much wealth, uh, many, many things that God has given to him. And in this portion of Scripture, as we look there, uh, chapter 14, verse number 1, there comes a problem. Abraham is in this land. He's dwelling here. And uh, if you look there, well, look at verse 18 of chapter 13, right there before chapter 14. It says, and Abr Then Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. So a Abraham is in what's called the plain of Mamre, uh, which is in Hebron. Uh, Hebron. That's uh, in this area of Canaan. He's just kind of traveling around. And, uh, and God is just leading him. He builds an altar to the Lord. And then in verse, and then chapter 14, it says, There came to pass in those days that these kings, and uh, I'm not very good with some of these names in the Bible, so you can read those names. I won't uh, mispronounce them there. But these kings here, uh, made a, they began to make war there in chapter 2. It says, These made war with Bera, the king of Sodom, and all of these other kings here. So Abraham gets kind of caught in between a, a little bit of a battle here. God gives us some history. There's these kings on one side that are going to take over these kings on the other side. Why is that? Well, verse uh, 4 tells us that 12 years they served this guy. I'm going to call him Ched. C-H-E-D. Ched. <laughs> We're going to call him Ched today. This, they served this king. And in the 13th year, they rebelled. So apparently these kings uh, were under the rulership of this man named Ched. And uh, he, they rebelled in the 13th year, and so they were going to go and conquer them for their rebellion. These men, for whatever reason, wanted freedom, or maybe they didn't like their, this guy, and they just wanted to be on their own. And so this guy is going to come and take over and, and conquer them. So they go into battle, verse 5, the 14th year came, and they go and they, and they go into battle, and uh, this, this king, Ched, uh, he wins. He defeats, this, uh, he defeats these other kings that come, in, that come against him. And I'm going somewhere, so just keep following the story. So we have the kings on one side that are under the leadership of this king, and they rebel in the 13th year of being in under, under rulership. So then 14 years later, this king, uh, or in the 14th year, he comes and conquers them, takes them over, destroys them, says, all right, you want to rebel, here you go, gives them a good whooping, puts them back in their place. But in doing that, when a king conquered a land, he got all the goods. He got the spoil, is what we call it. He got to go in, take whatever he wanted of what they possessed and of the people, and got to take it for himself and take it home. Well, if you're familiar with Abraham, when Abraham left the Ur of the Chaldees, he did not leave by himself. He left with his wife, and he left with his nephew named Lot. His brother had died, and so Abraham took responsibility for his nephew named Lot. Lot traveled with him. Well, Abraham began to, get, began to increase in wealth, and so did Lot. And so they split ways about halfway. Uh, if you read there in the book of Genesis, they split ways there in chapter 13. Lot goes to one place towards Sodom, which is a city, and Abraham goes the other way. Well, Lot eventually... Knowing what was in Sodom, eventually he begins to live there. And eventually he takes refuge in the city of Sodom, knowing that it wasn't God's will for him to do that. But Lot, for some reason, when he was with Abraham, he was blessed. 
But when he left Abraham, he decided not to follow his uncle's principles. He decided not to follow the God of Abraham. He decided to do his own thing. And he went to the world, the Bible says. Well, in this story, this king, con this king Ched, conquers all of these other kings, and one of the kings is the king of Sodom. He goes in there, he takes over the, 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 the city of Sodom, he takes all the goods that he wants, and with that he takes Lot. Lot becomes a captive, a, he becomes a, a, a refugee in a way, where he he, or a prisoner. He becomes a, a, maybe a slave, whatever they were going to do with him. I believe part of that is because Lot was very wealthy, and so they took him for his wealth. They took him for all the goods that he had. So we keep going in our story. It says there in verse number 12 of chapter 14, it says, And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods, and departed. So they took Lot, they took his goods, and they left. Funny how when you go to the world, it never turns out the way you thought it would. Amen. God's hand of protection was on Lot when he was with Abraham and he trusted God. When Lot went to the world, he had problems. Eventually, he lost everything. But here, he became a captive. If it wasn't for Abraham, both times. Later, it, if it wasn't for Abraham, God wouldn't have spared Lot. But it was because Abraham prayed for him. But this time, so he's taken captive. Verse 14. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. So he, Abraham had 318 servants. Wow, man, 318 guys, they were all born in his house. He raised them, he trained them, and so he takes and they get girded up for war. I love stories. I don't know if you follow, but I love stories. So Lot is over here. He becomes a captive with Sodom. Abraham's over here living in the other side of the plain. He gets word that these kings come and conquer, and they take Lot. And so now Lot is a captive, and he's going who knows where. And so Abraham's like, hey, you're not taking, you know, that's my family, amen. And uh, how many of you are one of those where you don't mess with family? You know, that's what I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, I would, <laughs> never mind, I had a funny story, but I won't tell. But, you know, you don't mess with family. That's what Abraham said, you know. You know, he was kind of like uh, how my mom is, you know, when uh, you mess with family, she's all sweet and loving until you mess with family, then she turns into, you know, and, uh, whew, it's messy, amen. My wife's the same way, amen. You can do, you know, she, she, she'll be sweet, be nice, you know, and all of these things, but man, when you mess with her brother, I, I remember in college, somebody messed with her brother, you know, and, uh, whoa, let me tell you, it's a bit, bad deal. You know, men, you know, we're not half as mean uh, as sometimes as ladies can be, amen. We're patient, you know, sometimes, I don't know, but. Anyway, so, but, uh, it, but Abraham's like, hey, it's family. So he goes after him, you know, he goes, takes him. And so we find he goes after him, and it says there that he divided himself in verse 15, 15 against them, he and his servants by night, and smote them and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus, and brought back all the goods and brought again his brother Lot and his goods and women and also and the people. So Abraham comes, comes back a hero. He goes, he takes over, he kills everybody, slays them, brings back Lot, brings back all the goods, marches back to Sodom, gives everybody back everything. Well, verse 18 we find, it says, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. We believe that this is the Lord in person. God comes down in person and, and, and calls himself Melchizedek, the priest of the Most High God. It says in verse 19, And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And he blessed, and blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. See, even Abraham tithed, amen. Even Abraham took what God gave him when he increased and gave God a tenth of what uh, God gave to him. Amen. So tithing, again, is not just something that God just made up for us in the New Testament. Amen. God has taken tithes ever since the beginning of time. So Abraham gives a tithe to God. And then we come to where we were at in our story. Abram gives back to the king of Sodom everything that he just lost. Gives him all the persons. Gives, and the, But the king of Sodom tells him, you can keep the goods. You can keep all that you, all the wealth that you found and all the goods because you conquered. Those are your spoils. Well, Abram tells him, I don't want them. He says, I told God I wouldn't even take a thread to a shoe latchet. See, Lot had something to do with Sodom. Abram wanted nothing to do with Sodom. Sodom and Gomorrah was a wicked place, a filthy place. And Abram didn't even want their goods. 
Abram decided to separate himself so much to the point that he said, I don't even want a shoe latchet of what you can give to me. He said, because then you'll say, I have made Abram rich. You know, the world's that way where the world wants to, to give you and they want to give you these get-rich-quick schemes and all of this stuff and they want to say, well, if you'll do this and stop maybe doing more for the Lord, I'll give you more money. I'll do this, make you rich. And Abram said, I don't want your filthy money. He said, as we saw there in, uh, in, verse, in chapter 15, verse num number 1, that God is his reward. Sometimes, and, and that's why, like, if somebody came to the church and offered me money, they wanted a casino. I wouldn't take it because it's filthy money. It's dirty money. And that's what Sodom and Gomorrah had. It was dirty money they wanted to give to Abram. And Abram said, no, I don't want anything to do with you. He said, you can keep it. Abram was willing to keep his principles and keep his love for God. Lot was willing to give it all up and take the wealth of the world Abram wanted nothing to do with it. He said, God can provide for me. I don't need what you have. He said, the only thing I want is what we ate. As you see there in verse 24, he said, just what the men have eaten and the portion of the men which went with me. So you have to imagine Abraham just gave up the wealth of the city of Sodom. Sodom was a wealthy city. It was very well-to-do. God destroys it eventually, but it is a very well-to-do city. Abraham gave up the wealth and the spoils of an entire city. Can you imagine if you conquered a city and the wealth and the spoils that you could take, whatever you wanted? Abraham had his pick, but he said, I don't want it. And then in chapter 15, verse number 1, the best part, God comes to Abraham and he says, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. He told Abraham, look, I know you just lost in the world's, the world's eyes an opportunity to be wealthy. I know you've just lost in the world's eyes all of these things you could have had and you said no. But he said, but don't worry. I am your exceeding great reward. Boy, you know what? It, I believe God gives us this because he wants to teach us it pays to serve God. Amen. You can have everything else in this world but my friend, there's nothing as great as the treasure of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lot was willing to sell it all, give it to Sodom. Sell it all and give it to the world. But Abraham said, no, I've got something better. I don't need what you have. I've got God. God will take care of my needs. God will take care of me. He said, I don't need what the world has to offer. Amen. Go ahead, world, and chase your riches and chase your wealth and fame and get all that you want. But, buddy, I've got a greater treasure in heaven. Amen. The Bible says, set your affection not on, not on the earth but on things above. Amen. There's something greater coming. And I believe that Abraham here, and it reminded me, God says, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Abraham was a born-again Christian. He saved just like you and I. And God was trying to remember him, hey, he was trying to remind him, hey, Abraham, there's some benefits to being a Christian. He was trying to remind him, hey, Abraham, there's some benefits to living for God. There's some benefits to being a Christian. A lot of Christians don't realize, like Lot, we go to the world, we sell out because we think, well, what is it in there for me? What does God have for me? But my friend Abraham real knew that God has some benefits today, amen. And this is where I had some fun. And uh, my outline is kind of out of the normal, but I think that you'll enjoy it. And uh, there's some benefits to serving God, amen. God gives us benefits as his children, amen. Don't let the world make you think that they have something up their sleeve or they have something better than what you have. My friend, if you've got the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, you've got it all. Amen. Boy, it's good to be saved. Amen. But along with that, God gives us benefits. Kind of like, like we talked about earlier. When you work a job, you get a job. You not only get in a, a paycheck, but there's some benefits that come along with that. Well, being a Christian, amen, there's benefits that come with that. Number one, God has zero, it's to, to get these benefits, it's zero down and a zero deductible, amen. God doesn't charge you, amen, to get his benefits. He tells you, that, and, and can I tell you that God says it's absolutely free, amen. It's a gift from God, 
Amen. You don't got to come and pay God and you don't got to earn it from God. You don't got to get baptized at the church. You don't got to be a member of the church on all of those things. God says when, he's, when you're his child, amen, you get opted in right there. Amen. Romans chapter 11, verse number 6. Show you a good verse. If you're dealing with somebody that tries to tell you that you have to earn salvation, let me show you a verse. Romans 11, 6 says, And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. In other words, God's trying to say it's either of grace or it's of works. Can't be both. You either get to heaven by the grace of God or you get to heaven because you work for it. Amen. But God says, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are ye saved. Amen. You don't got to put a down payment to get to heaven. Amen. God takes you as you are. God says you don't got to put anything down. You don't got to have so much money uh, to give him. God says it's a gift, not of works. Amen. Boy, that's good. Jude chapter 1 verse 23, another benefit that comes with being saved. Amen. Jude chapter 1 verse 23. I'll let you, I'll read the verse and then give you a chance to guess it. Jude chapter 1 verse 23. Let me get there. The Bible says, And others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Amen. With this, uh, with being saved, God gives you fire insurance. Amen. Can I be proud to say that this, that when you're saved, born again, amen, it comes with a guarantee. No worries that you'll never touch hell. You'll never have to worry about it. God says you've escaped the flames of hell for eternity. Never again do you have to spend one more sleepless night worrying about whether or not you're going to wake up in the flames of hell. You can rest in peace tonight to know that that God's got you covered. Amen. You glad you're born again tonight? Boy, I sure love that. Amen. When you get saved, amen, God gives you fire insurance. Amen. God says, don't worry, buddy. You're taken care of. Amen. But, you know, sadly, when, uh, that some people forget they have this. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 9. Some people forget the benefits that God's given to them. Some people forget they have this fire insurance. Show this to you. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 9. The Bible says, But he that lacketh these things is blind, and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Boy, it's sad. Sometimes some Christians can even forget that they've been purged. Some Christians can even forget that God's given them a home in heaven. Some Christians even forget that Jesus Christ has saved them, and, get, and that they have been purged from their old sins. Boy, we ought not to get to a point where we forget, where we become unthankful that God saved us from an eternal hell. Amen. Are you saved tonight, born again? Well, when you accepted Jesus as your Savior, you became a child of God. God gave you a fire insurance that you'll never have to worry about. Amen. Praise God. Also, another, another thing, that another benefit, another perk to being saved, I love this, is God gives you a 24-hour hotline, amen? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 17 says, Pray without ceasing, amen? Psalms chapter 121, verse number 4 says, The God that keepeth Israel the, neither slumber nor sleeps, amen? No matter what comes your way, you're born again tonight, you're saved like Abraham. God wanted to remind him that God's your seeding great reward, and God's given you a 24-hour hotline. You can get a hold of him and pray, no no matter what comes your way, amen. Hey, Christian, God's given you a benefit today that when problems come night or day, you can bow your knee in prayer. You can get a hold of him. When health problems come, when a loved one is sick, when something comes up that you didn't expect, amen, get a hold of God and call him, amen. Get a hold of God and ask him for help. God's given you an opportunity that not everybody else has, amen. Some people try to call this hotline and can't get a hold of God. And they wonder, well, why doesn't God hear me? Well, my friend, are you part of the family? Amen. Amen. The perks only come when you're in the family. Amen. You only get the benefits if you're a part of this family. Amen. You can't try to get a hold of God and pray and pray and pray and say, God, 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 when you're not a member. Amen. God says when you become a member of the family, God gives you an, a, a, a prayer. Amen. Or God gives you an opportunity to pray. Tough times come, but a lot of times Christians forget that they can get a hold of God. A lot of times tough times come, and instead of getting a hold of God, we blame God. Well, God, it's your fault. When God says this is the time God wants you to get a hold of him, amen. Do you pray today? Well, get a hold of God, amen. Tough times are going to come. Our first response as a Christian should be prayer. That should be like second nature, amen. When something comes up, somebody gets sick, your first response should to be to pray for them. When family problems come up, when there's a financial need, 
take advantage of prayer and get a hold of God. God giving you that benefit. It's kind of like when some people, they forget that they even have benefits. They forget that they even have an opportunity to go do things. If you don't know what benefits you have, you never use them. But a lot of times Christians don't even realize that they can get a hold of God in prayer. Or sometimes they do have them and you don't use them. Amen. How many of you have ever, uh, maybe you have a benefit from work you never use. <laughs> you know, you have free cleanings for your teeth and uh, you never do it. Amen. And, uh, or, you know, if you're like me, you can go and get, you know, checkups and stuff and you never go to the doctor. Hey, who needs a doctor? Amen. I'm perfect health. And uh, so, <laughs> amen. But we sometimes neglect the benefits that we're given. And a lot of times Christians neglect prayer. Boy, prayer is not something to be neglected in a Christian's life. Prayer is not something that you should take lightly, amen. Prayer is a privilege that God's given to you that you can get a hold of him, amen. Abraham had a resource that the king of Sodom didn't realize. King of Sodom thought he was doing Abraham a favor, but he didn't realize Abraham had an almighty God that he got a hold of. God would take care of him. He, doesn't, he said, I don't need the world, amen. But most times Christians run to the world before they run to God, amen. Use prayer. Number four, I like this. 1 John chapter 2, verse number 2. 1 John chapter 2, verse number 2. Let me get there. Another, another benefit, amen, and I like this. I had, to, I had to work with insurance when I was in college, and so all of these things and benefits, I, I, it was funny for me. So I enjoyed this. 1 John chapter 2, verse number 2, and it says, And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Can I tell you tonight that God gives 100% coverage, amen? <laughs> God is so good that he doesn't, make, he doesn't pay 80 and you pay 20, amen? God doesn't say, well, you cover uh, 15 and I'll cover uh, 75. No, God says says, I'll cover 100%, amen, everything tonight. If you've sinned and you know it and you maybe, uh, you've, maybe you've failed God and you know, say, God, boy, I, I really messed it up, amen. Well, God says he paid for the sins of the whole world, amen. You and I are forgiven. If you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, amen, there's not a sin that you can do that God can't cover, amen. There's not something so bad that you failed that God says he doesn't have cover, amen. God's policy takes it all, amen. I like the song that says, I don't know what a sinner you are, but I know what a Savior he is. I don't know where your feet have taken you, but his climbed up Calvary's hill. I don't know what kind of words you've spoken, but his words were, Father, forgive. I don't know what a sinner you are, but I sure know what a Savior he is. Amen. Jesus covers everything. Amen. When he died on that old rugged cross, he gave himself to be the propitiation. Amen. He paid everything. A lot of times Christians get saved and then they think, well, maybe there's something that God doesn't cover. Maybe if you do something so bad that God doesn't pay for it. Well, I'm sorry, God pays for everything, amen. I worked with a lady one time that thought that suicide is something God doesn't cover. That'll send you straight to hell. My friend, I'm sorry, God covers everything, amen. When he died on the cross, he didn't die and say, well, I'll pay for most sin, amen. No, the Bible says he paid for all sin. Amen. God knew what you would do. Amen. God knew where you were from. God knew what would happen in your life. God knew what he was asking for. And he said, I'll take you. Amen. Praise God. Then 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse number 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse number 11. The Bible says, and such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Some of these people were washed, the Bible says, here in 1 Corinthians. What were they? We'll go back a few verses here. We'll go and look. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterators, nor, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. You know, God takes pre-existing conditions, amen. <laughs> you may have had something from before. You may come to Jesus and say, Lord, I've got a past. 
Lord, I've got some problems. Lord, I've done some things. But amen, God takes everybody, amen. Doesn't matter what you come to God with. Such were some of you, the Bible says. You may come to God and have, a, have, some, have some guilt, have a weight of, of, of sin on your shoulder that you've had for a while. But God says burdens are lifted at Calvary, amen. God takes whatever that you have. Nothing that you give to God that he can't fix. Nothing that you give to God that he can't take. Amen. God takes it all. Praise God. Amen. Sometimes people think, well, I'm too bad. God can't take me. Or they say, well, I'm so bad that if I walked into church, the roof would fall. But I'm here to tell you, God takes it all. Amen. Doesn't matter what you come, what pre-existing condition that you've had, God's forgiven it. Amen. You can come to church and know that God is a loving God. That'll forgive you no matter what there is. Amen. Oh, I sure love God's benefits. Amen. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 13 is a familiar verse. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. The blessing about another blessing that God gives us is there's no supplement that's needed. Amen. You don't need additional supplements to add to what God has. Maybe, well, maybe God doesn't cover everything. Maybe I better uh, get something else to help. But I'm sorry, my friend. God takes care of it all amen in your life as a christian uh, sometimes we think well maybe god doesn't maybe god's not going to take care of me in this area i know god saved me but maybe maybe i need to be careful and and maybe i need to take some extra hours and and skip maybe a few sundays or maybe no my friend god can take care of you god doesn't need a supplement amen god doesn't need your help god says he'll take care of it all you can do all things through christ Amen. Jesus can get all things done. Amen. And you can do it all. We can take care of it. God can build the church. Amen. We don't need a supplement around here of maybe a rock band or maybe we need or we don't need a supplement of maybe some some kind of moody music or something that most churches think they have to have to draw a crowd. But my friend, God does it all. We don't need help or God doesn't need help. Amen. When you get saved, amen, God gives you the victory to overcome. A lot of times Christians don't realize God's given them victory in their life. And we think, well, I've got to have some other help besides God. Maybe I've got to have uh, some, some medicine or maybe I've got to have that. And I don't downplay sometimes that that can help. But my friend, God can help you with any problem that you have. Amen. God can help you overcome. God can give you victory. Amen. You don't need a supplement. Amen. You don't need to go to the world and say, what does the world have that maybe I can use? That Because maybe, I, maybe you doubt God and say, well, maybe I don't know if God can take care of this. My friend, God can do it all. In your life, God has given you the power to do all things. Amen. But it's through Christ. What a blessing. Amen. Number seven, uh, or, or just a, another thing on the line here, uh, is family coverage. Amen. God gives you family coverage. He says, train up a child in the way he should go, and he will not depart from it. Amen. In Timothy, the Bible says that Timothy knew from as a child the Holy Scriptures, and they were able to make him wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. God says, look, if you'll take what I've given to you, you'll train your children up, you'll get the Word of God in there, God says He'll take care of the rest. Amen. God will take care of your children. Sometimes we worry, well, I don't know if I'm going to maybe be the best parent, or maybe I'm going to, you know, God says, no, you train them up in the way they should go, and you get them the Bible. Amen. God will take care of the rest. God will help. Amen. God will help provide. You do the best that you know how. You get in God's Word. You find out what God says about child rearing, and then you leave the rest up to God. Amen. God says He'll take care of your family. God says He'll provide for your needs. And sometimes we get to where, well, God, my family, we've got to have this. We've got to have that. God says He's got you covered. Amen. Notice there in Genesis chapter 15, verse number 1, He tells Abraham, I am thy shield. My first thought was that was real funny. Is God gives you, God gives you insurance, Amen. Better than Blue Cross Blue Shield, Amen. God says He's our shield, Amen. He will take care of us. He's our protection when health problems come. God will be your shield. God will take care of you when problems come your way and the devil's fighting and the fiery darts of the wicked hit you from every corner. God says I'm your shield this morning or this evening. God says when things pile up and you begin to fall under the weight of problems and burdens come and maybe things aren't looking the way that you thought they would and maybe uh, as a Christian you thought, well, I didn't think that God would let this come my way. God's your shield tonight, amen. 
God will protect you. God has this protection plan for you. Sometimes I and I know uh, some friends of mine that uh, children. God has given them children that maybe uh, weren't. Uh, they they had some handicaps and they didn't understand what God was doing in their life. But God says, "I'll take care of you." Maybe God's given to you a burden, as Paul said. Maybe God's given you a thorn in the flesh today. But God says He'll take care of you. God's your shield tonight. You just have to trust Him. Don't go to the world. Don't be like Lot and try to go find an answer from somebody else. You be like Abraham and let God be your great reward. Sometimes we run to the world too much, amen. We run to the world for everything when God's given you the benefits that you need. God's given you what you need to take care of you. He's your shield. The Bible says He's also the shield of salvation, amen. He's the shield that will take care of you uh, for everything, for salvation, for your problems, for things that come. Boy, I love the Lord, amen. God says He's our buckler. He's our shield. Amen. When you can't maybe take everything that's coming at you, just pull up the shield of faith and let God take it. Amen. He says He'll take the weight. Amen. He'll take the darts. He'll take the, he'll take the pressure. Just go to God in prayer and give it to Him. And then the last thing that God has, and then we'll be done. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 4. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 4. The best... One of the best benefits of all, I think. This, what's make, this is what made me the most excited. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 4. Let me get there. 1 <laughs> Peter chapter 1, verse number 4. It says, To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Boy, God's got the best retirement plan you have ever seen, my friend. Amen. Boy, when you one day retire from this old life, and you one day give it up, and there's nothing left, and you die and give it all, the Bible says God has a place in heaven reserved for you. Amen. God has streets of gold, gates of pearl, jasper walls, a mansion, crystal sea, and a marriage supper waiting on you. Amen. In eternity with the Savior. Boy, that makes me excited. Amen. When I serve God and this old world looks at Christians and they think, well, you're, you're losing quite a bit. You don't maybe make as much as we do. Or maybe there's not as many. You, you serve in God. You're crazy. You, you go to church all the time and you don't have the nicest things. But you just look at them and say, yeah, buddy, but I've got a good retirement coming. Amen. When I get to heaven, buddy, you're going to be sitting down at the feet of Jesus and you're going to have to be sitting on the gold streets while I'm up in heaven, when I'm up in a mansion because because of serving God. Amen. Many people are saved and going to be in heaven. But God says that he gives you a reward for your work on earth. Amen. And so, but God, the best thing that God gives you is because you're saved, God gives you a home in heaven. Amen. God does give, every, amen. It doesn't matter whether you've worked and, and whether you've uh, served in church all your life or whether you're like the thief on the cross, you'll get to spend eternity in heaven. Amen. I love that. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 9 is another good verse I wanted to look up. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 9. The Bible says, But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things, of God. Amen. Boy, God's got something that you've never seen, something that your ears have never heard, your eyes have never laid hold on. Amen. When you enter heaven, it'll be a sight that you've never seen before. It'll be a sound you've never heard, and it'll be something that's never even been in imagination because of what God has prepared for them that love Him. Boy, I'm excited for that one day. Amen. But you know, God's retirement plan is only to those that are born again. Not everybody will get to spend eternity in heaven, sad to say. Not everybody has this benefit. It's only to those that trust Jesus as their Savior. Only to those that are His child, the Bible says. Like we said, Romans eleven six. 6, God says it's either of grace or it's of works. When you trust God, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved through faith, then God immediately gives you a home in heaven. But when you try to trust God through works, God refuses. Because works are not, and this is something that you can't pay for. This is something you can never earn. God only gives it to those that trust Him by faith. And all of these benefits that we talked about, everything that we went over, these are all uh, apprehended by faith. They all come when a Christian puts his faith in Jesus Christ. The opportunity to pray. 
All of these things of protection, the things that God gives to His children, all come when we trust Jesus by faith. Amen. And sometimes you don't even realize you have it. Children, when they trust Jesus by faith, don't even realize they get all these benefits. But they're there. New Christians, when you trust Jesus by faith, maybe didn't realize you had all of some of these benefits, but they're there. But for those that have never trusted Jesus as their Savior, can I tell you, you're not in this plan. You have a different policy today. You're under the devil's insurance. You're under the devil's plan. The Bible says the devil's your father, and he has a home for you. The Bible says that the devil has an opportunity for you. Amen. Sometimes people in the world try to take a hold of God's benefits not realizing that they're not covered. Amen. Because you have to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Have you, have you been born again? Are you saved today? Are you a child of God? Well, if you're born again, these are your benefits today that God's given to you. Like Abraham, you don't have to worry and go to the world. You don't have to go to Sodom and get what they have to offer. God is your exceeding great reward. But if you're like many others, that you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior, then one day fire and brimstone will take, amen, will take you. God forbid. I believe that God delivered Lot also to show us that even Christians live in the world. But one day, one day God will deliver the Christian from this world, but this world will fall into fire and brimstone. One day God's going to come back. And all the lots that maybe have been backslidden, God will take, along with all, the, all of the Abrahams. Anybody saved, but everybody else will be left for fire and brimstone. God forbid. But boy, I'm sure glad God's given me these benefits. God has a place in heaven waiting for you next to Him. Like we learned the other week, God, Jesus asked, can we be there with Him? God's got a place next to you for the Savior. Amen. Next to you with the Savior. Amen. Jesus has a place right beside him. Amen. That's the best retirement plan there is. Amen. A seat next to Jesus. Amen. You may not get to live to be very old. Maybe God takes you early. But boy, you've got a place in heaven waiting for you. Amen. Maybe you've given your life to the Lord. And in the world's eyes, you don't have very much. But boy, you've got a lot with God. Amen. Christians that give their life to serve God their entire lives. Amen. They, in the world's eyes, they're not very successful. But in God's eyes, they've got quite a bit laid up in heaven. Amen. Amen. A retirement plan is something that you put into for years. Amen. A 401k or a Roth IRA or whatever you do, you put in years and years. And maybe you never see the immediate return. But one day when you retire, you get it all. Amen. Well, on heaven, it's like that. We serve and we live and we go and we serve. And we don't get to see the fruits of our labor right now. But one day when, you sp when you're standing before the Savior, God says He'll give it all back to you. Amen. And the blessing is we'll get to take it all and give it all right back to the Savior at His feet. But like I said, these benefits are to those that are born again. Have you trusted Jesus today? Now, I'd like to clarify one more time. God says in Romans eleven six, you've got grace on one side and works on the other. God says if this thing, if salvation is by works, then it's only works. If salvation's by grace, then it's only grace. God says it can't be both. A lot of churches out there will try to teach you that it's a combination. God says, Romans eleven six, it's either one or the other. And then Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 says, For by grace are you saved. God clarifies it for you. God says, It's by grace. Amen. It's God's riches at Christ's expense. It's by grace. Nothing you can do to earn it. Our righteousness is filthy rags before God. God says you've got to trust one or the other. A lot of Christians sometime will trust both. Well, I, I, maybe... Uh, maybe I can, uh, and, and they put their feet on both. And God says that's not salvation. Salvation comes when you place your faith and trust only in Jesus. Lots of churches will try to teach you that you can get the benefits of being a Christian, but it's by being good, by going to church, by baptism, and trusting Jesus. God says you can't do it. Amen. It's all because of Jesus Christ. 
Are you born again tonight? Well, praise God if you are. You've got some benefits. Take advantage of them. Don't let these things just... And, and be thankful for these benefits. Be thankful for what God's given to you. A lot of Christians don't take advantage of what God's given to them. And lots of Christians aren't thankful. Amen. Be thankful you're born again. Be thankful that hell's no longer your home. Be thankful that you can pray and get a hold of God when problems come. The world wishes they had the benefits you had. It's kind of like when I used to work at the hospital. I would work, but I was a PRN. I didn't get the benefits of being full-time or part-time. They were uh, yeah, prejudiced against us PRN people. You know, we used to be like, hey. And I didn't get the benefits. They, could, they, would wave them in, they kind of would wave them in your face almost. Say, well, if you were full-time, you could get this. And I'd say, hey, 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 hey. Well, you know, as a Christian, the world sometimes looks at you and, and, and they want the benefits that you have. They want the privilege to be able to go to God. They want the privilege to be able to have God's hand of protection on them. They just don't know how to get it. And that's why it's our job, amen, to preach the gospel. It's our job to tell people how Jesus died and loved them and gave them a home in heaven, and then they can have those, amen. A lot of people just don't understand. We've got to preach the gospel. Take advantage of the benefits God's given to you. What a blessing it is to be born again. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we sure do love you.